When it came to the 1959 election, the Conservative campaign asserted that life's better with the Conservatives. Don't let Labour ruin it. The slogan was used on hoardings and running newspaper ads, and the Tories sought to demonstrate the same message through their party election broadcasts, which focused on their record and policies. Back in 1957, Macmillan had told a Tory party garden fate of the prosperity spreading through the country, of a kind not witnessed in his lifetime, and certainly not since the Second World War. What he actually said was, let us be frank about it, most of our people have never had it so good. The Conservatives gave the first party election broadcast of the 1959 campaign when the Prime Minister presented an end of Parliament report from his country house, Birch Grove in Sussex, the kind of grand country residence better known to the upper reaches of the Conservative Party than to the ordinary British voter. There now follows an election broadcast on behalf of the Conservative and Unionist Party. Just after the last Parliament had finished its work in July, the Prime Minister invited to his home several of his senior colleagues. This evening, we are to hear some excerpts from the many topics which were discussed. With the Prime Minister were Mr. R. A. Butler, Mr. Hethcote Amory, Mr. Ian MacLeod, Lord Hailsham. Well, I've asked you to come here today the day that Parliament has gone into recess, because I thought we might have a talk about the future, about next session, and above all, about our policy for the next five years. I'm very sorry that uh, Selwyn isn't able to be with us, but he's still working away at Geneva, uh, and I think things are looking better there. But anyway, I think we ought to have a word about uh, each of us, how we see we can set about the job from now on. I think we could be fairly satisfied the way things have gone lately, don't you, Rob? Yes, but we've got through our programme very well. I've just come from the House, and we've right up to date. There's no need for an overspill in the autumn. And we've really had a very strong programme. It is a rather remarkable programme, you know, for a government that's been eight years in office. The keynote, is, of course, was um, social reform, but we recast the whole of the mental health laws. Uh, I had a factory bill. Uh, there was the new provision for house purchase. And uh, we put in cotton and also national assistance and after the program had started. Yes, and, and the pension and bill. And the pension bill, of course. I, of course, um, don't think we had as much opposition, perhaps, as we expected at the beginning of the session. Well, that's true. But, uh, <coughs> Chancellor, it's really you who've really been the, the base of when which we've done all this, because uh, somehow or another, partly by good luck, but I think by good management, we seem to have suddenly, last few months, got into a position quite different which we've ever had since the war. Somehow or another, we brought off what I called the other day two doubles. We've had for the first time steady cost of living for 18 months. We don't hear much about the cost of living now, which we heard so much about a few years ago. Going on too, I think that's you, stability. I think it will. Mm -hmm. You go to get the figures and you can see. Well, then the other thing at the same time, we've had full employment. What are your figures now? I mean, they're full employment. Oh, certainly. I know they're the marginal problems of the special areas. We will talk about them in a moment. But we've got full employment and steady prices. Same time, we've managed somehow or another to bring off another double to uh, have spent an enormous increase on the social services. And at the same time, we've reduced taxation by about the same amount. Well, all I can say is, Chancellor of the Exchequer, Daddy, you keep on at that work and it'll be all right. Well, Prime Minister, the more comfortable and, uh, position we're enjoying today is really, if you think of it, really the result of all the work and, and the, uh, uh, the policies we've been following over the past seven years. Well, that is well of them. I mean, Rab did a tremendous lot of this in his four years. Uh, you went on, and uh, my predecessor also took the uh, st stern measures that were just necessary at that time with all our support. Yeah, yeah. But I, I believe, really, that uh, th this has worked out in the way we uh, hoped it would work out. I believe now we've got a firm base for our future plans, and provided we can uh, keep that, and make sure that we don't allow inflation to come back again, then I believe we can go ahead. Chancellor, 
there's one matter that worries me uh, in this. Of course, the general outlook uh, is extremely satisfactory. But we mustn't disguise from ourselves that there are places uh, in these islands that have not responded as quickly as we would like. Uh, to the various measures uh, that we have put forward. I think you'd agree with Absolutely. that. Scotland, uh, Scotland, certainly the industrial belt of Scotland, uh, parts of uh, Wales, particularly perhaps uh, South Wales, Merseyside and the North East Coast. And the matter that uh, concerns me as Minister of Labour is this. Some of these places represent obstinate problems, not of general, but of local unemployment. And I'm not satisfied that our measures are fully adequate to this. And this is why well, I... Because they are based upon the old past when there were whole areas. Yes. No, it isn't whole areas, it's special places inside. Certainly it. that, partly Prime Minister, but also because in the difficult times over the last um, 18 months, there hasn't been enough industry wanting to move. And now as we're moving into more prosperous times, I believe there will be enough industry wanting to yeah. move. And that is why I think we can solve some of these problems much more easily in this uh, time that we are now moving into. And that's why I, I'm wondering if, if RAB can find a place in the program next session for a bill that I know David Eccles has been doing a lot of work on at the Board of Trade to recast the whole of our distribution of industry policy. Well, Rab, we've been talking chiefly about industry and, and its uh, successes and some of its problems. I think you might uh, say something about agriculture because after all, yes. that's the greatest industry in the whole well, it's, country. It's our greatest industry and one of our greatest employing industries. And of course, the farm workers' future, which has improved so much lately, depends upon the success of our maintaining prices for farm commodities. And I suggest that what we want to do is to give the farmers a long-term outlook following upon the acts of 1947 and 57 so that they have something to look forward to in the years to come. And I don't doubt that we can agree that with um, you, Derry. Well, um, I can look at this from rather two angles oh, no. because I was your Minister of Agriculture and I uh, um, uh, worked on certain policies like that. And then I moved into my present chair and I rather wondered whether things would look very different for me uh, from my present position. But I'm absolutely as certain as I was when I was Minister of Agriculture that our present policies of support uh, to, to our home f food production is right uh, from the point of view of, of strategies, our strategic interests, our economic interests, and our social interests. And I'm sure that 1957 Agriculture Act, which extended and improved the assurances of the 1947 Act, to which we'd also given our, our support, uh, has put us on the right line, and we must see that those assurances we gave are carried out, not as a temporary thing, but as a permanent part of our... But, our Chancellor, isn't the best way of giving that confidence to the farming community for us to give a pledge, which I believe we could at this uh, coming election, whenever it comes, that we will not alter in the next Parliament the long-term guarantees of the 1957 Act. Well, I believe those uh, assurances were sound, and uh, from my point of view, I think that would be uh, good in the national uh, interest, because, you know, it isn't uh, the, 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 the great gain to the whole country from our present methods of supporting agriculture is that we uh, safeguard the income of the producer but in a way that enables the consumer to buy a food at competitive world yeah. price. That's well said for a different man, I think. I believe. <laughs> <laughs> well, apart from that, uh, what are the plans? We've got a plenty of plans. I suppose you think Chancellor too many. <laughs> yes, my, I know. <laughs> my only complaint is just that, that every minister's bursting with new ideas, most of them very good ones indeed. But of course, we can't do everything at once. But provided that we do keep our basic economy sound, I've no doubt whatever that we can go steadily ahead. Well, then the people, that's, to do this job, surely we've got to take some priorities. We can't do everything. Uh, when I was Minister of Housing, I was given the job and we concentrated on building of new houses. 300,000. But now I think in the housing, the people are doing it so much for themselves. We go on with it, but a great deal we got back into the private housing. So in that field, it's slums. And don't forget homes or special arrangements for old people. I think those are the two important things in the housing. Apart from that, what are the other priorities? Now, you've been uh, the Minister of Education. Would you say that was one? I think we were quite right to put housing first, and I think we were quite right to put education first. And our education plans, I should think, will take another 10 or 15 years of steady expansion to carry out. I always thought to take a whole generation after the education. Well, that would put it about another yes. 10 or 15 yes. years, wouldn't it, yes. from 1944, which yes. was your act. 
Well, then we've got to think of things which we've left undone uh, because we've been too busy. There's uh, youth, the, 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 the youth service, a very important thing which we've left, uh, which has been left behind a bit. There's sport and the arts, um, things of that kind. I want to put in, if I may, a special plea here for hospital building. Yeah. Um, I remember very well when I was Minister of Health and you, you Rab, were, were at the Treasury, we started what was in effect the first program of hospital building since the war. You remember it. But I think you would also agree that not enough has been done. It isn't enough for us just to say that the socialists built no hospitals at all. They didn't. But we must do much better than that. We are already embarked on a substantial hospital building program. But in the next five years, I would like to see that very much increased. I think this must now become a, a, a major part of our program. Well, I, I think that's an example of where, well, yes. Yeah. But I, I don't quarrel with that, Ian. We are getting into gear with the hospital building, and uh, I think um, among ourselves we've agreed that over the next five years we, we ought to rally to something like double the, the present rate of yes. the building. And then there's roads. Roads, of course, uh, is a reflection of, of the increasing prosperity we've been talking about. Well, we because more road. people buy cars, and of so, of course, they want better roads. Yeah. But the problems of prosperity are a good deal of easier and happier ones to cope with than the problems of deflation. Well, any one of my who's like been having... through both, mm. you can see what the difference is. Yes, I'm sure. Oh, I'm looking yeah. forward to the day when they can, ha everybody can have cars, but won't need roads. A car with um, uh, a helicopter. helicopter. Yeah, oh, yeah. 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 Well, now collect idea. the tax on the cars, <laughs> and we don't have to pay for the road. Well, I'm sure we've got to have a, a big and uh, if the Chancellor will let us have it, uh, an increasing uh, program of road construction. We're getting a long way on with the motorways, of course, but, and there are any number of bottlenecks in some of the cities that we've got to be ironed out. I don't know if you can iron a bottleneck out, but um, anyway, to get rid of them. And there are any number also of exciting uh, projects, many of them in Scotland, of course, the two Clyde tunnels, the Forth Bridge and the Tay Bridge, and in Wales, the Seven Bridge. And I'm sure in this next five years, Prime Minister, we must uh, push on with all these. We've done a well, pretty big field. There's one side of it, perhaps the most human appeal that appeals to us all, and that's the care of the old people. We've now got a scheme which links up with other forms of superannuation, private forms, and now we've also steadied the cost of living, and now we've simply got to give an assurance to these old people that we will watch their condition in relation to the future, that is, in relation to the future prosperity of the country, in relation to their cost. Yes, I'm sure we have, and I think we, we must go further than that. You see, if we are moving, and we believe we are, into uh, prosperous times, provided uh, conservative policies remain, it's important that the whole nation shares in that prosperity. Now, Harold, you've been kind enough to ask us all down here, and here we are, and we've been discussing the next five years. It seems to me we ought to have a word about the next five weeks, because that's what's going to matter to enable us to carry out our program in the next five years. Uh, what do you say, Ian? You are a great election <laughs> expert. <laughs> well, um... Almost as good as you are a bridge player. <laughs> <laughs> well, I've retired from being a bridge player, but uh, not from taking part in elections. Uh, I think this next election is going to be an enormously important one. It's almost platitudinous to say that, but uh, I think this one is going to be important because we're trying to do something that's really very unusual. I think Quentin it was you that called it Operation Hatchet, and in fact, I don't think it has been done in modern politics. And I think one of the great issues of this election is really <coughs> going to be the question of whether one's policies are in tune with this age. And I simply believe that the socialists are not bad people, or foolish people, or wicked people. I think they're just absolutely out of date. I think socialism has nothing whatever to offer. Exactly, as extreme individualism is out of date too, and our whole yes. thing is a kind of compromise, a sense of partnership between everybody concerned, between government and industry, trade unions and employers, and all the rest. Certainly. I it think we can point to uh, the last eight years and to say to people, well, do you want things to be handled in this kind of way, or do you want to go back to the system that was tried six years before that? But on the other hand, we've got to look forward, and we've been discussing plans which depend for their success upon whether this country remains a free country under free enterprise or not. I think opportunity is the, uh, the, the key to the whole thing, don't you? To and the, beauty. Uh, uh, opportu that's right. Uh, and really. beauty. Uh, We're going to have a society here so within 10 or 15 years. About uh, a fifth, perhaps, perhaps more, will be learning. Mm. And about a fifth will be resting. 
let's say old age pensions yes. and so on. And the other three fifths have got to keep and look after all the young who are learning up now to university standard and all the rest. They've got to look after, with their effort, because it all comes out of them, it doesn't come out of nothing. They've got to keep up their own standards and pay for the standards of the other two parts, the learners and the resters, and invest over Brooks seas and develop the world and lift up the nations outside to the level of our nations, if we can. Well, that's both opportunity and duty, and that's what we've got to tell the young Yes, people. and it can be done. Well, that film was taken seven weeks ago at my house. Of course, it was tremendously condensed. And it deals almost entirely with home affairs. The reason for that was twofold. First, that we are going to put on a program later on in this election of uh, Commonwealth problems, and especially the problems of Africa, which present such an immense challenge to British leadership in the next five years. And secondly, we couldn't deal with home foreign affairs because the foreign secretary was away at Geneva. Well, now he's back here. He left New York at uh, three o'clock this morning, and here he is. Now, Sir Wynne, what do you think of it all? First, Geneva. As you say, Prime Minister, 3,500 miles from New York in under seven hours and very little sleep. With regard to Geneva, that really began with our visit to Moscow. We decided to go to Moscow in February because we felt after the Russian note about Berlin, things were taking a nasty turn and we had to go and have frank talks with the Soviet leaders. Well, we had an ultimatum in effect. An ultimatum in effect. Well, I think we did have frank talks and one of the results of, of those frank talks uh, was the Geneva Conference. Well, now it went on for, for three months. Uh, what do you think you achieved there? Well, I think we certainly succeeded in narrowing the differences. I, I think we identified the problems, to use a rather hackneyed phrase, but I felt myself that after our talks there was an agreement in the making. Well, anyway, there's no more ultimatum, but there's negotiation. Is that fair to say? That is fair to say, and I think we, we played our part in creating the kind of atmosphere in which everybody accepts that yeah. it's contacts and negotiation, not threats. And then some more followed. We made some trade arrangements too, didn't yes, we? But I think it is very important in these matters not just to talk. I think you have to act. And one of the things we did decide to do when we were in Moscow was to try and come to definite agreements about trade, about contacts, uh, about so-called cultural relations, yeah. and, and about uh, communication. Yeah, but now about New York. What was the main feature there? I suppose your disarmament plan was very well received. Well, uh, Mr. Khrushchev's speech, of course, uh, which he made well, on, on Friday, was listened to uh, with very great interest. Um, I, I heard it, and uh, uh, there was a great crowd also to hear it. I was pleased that he devoted so much attention to disarmament. Yeah. Because during the course of our talks with Mr. Grumiko and the other foreign ministers in Geneva, we had come to an agreement to set up a new body to start another round of disarmament And it's talks. to that body that your plan will go? Yes. I, I think, you see, it, it's very important to, to, to uh, try and make a fresh start yeah, in disarmament. I agree. Uh, we, we, throughout all the, the nuclear uh, test conference and so on, I felt all the time uh, that we've been getting an opportunity again for a fresh start. Now, I hope that this new body will look at the plan which we put forward which I put forward uh, on Thursday, and, and also at the plan which Mr. Khrushchev well, put forward. Of course, the nub of the whole thing is a proper system of inspection and control. That's true, isn't it? Mr. Khrushchev appears to accept stages uh, and also control. Well, we've got to examine that, because our aim is the abolition of all nuclear weapons, all weapons of mass destruction, uh, and, and proceed with conventional disarmament too. Well, now, our time is up. The questions that you have to settle at this election are very important, but they're very simple. The first is, do you want to go on based on the prosperity that we've won at home and build still greater prosperity in the future? And do you want the same leaders to represent you in these tremendous negotiations, summit meetings and all the rest that lie ahead of us abroad? I hope Indeed, I'm confident that your answer will be that you want uh, what your answer will be to both. And all I can say is 
that if it is as I hope, we will do our best to serve you. Good night. On the 8th of October, you are going to be asked to vote, to decide the future for your country, for your family, and for yourself. Life is better with the Conservatives. Life has been better with the Conservatives. Much better. Better for everyone. And it can be better still. Don't let the Labour Party spoil it. On the 8th of October, you are going to be asked to vote. It is your duty to your country, to your family, and to yourself that you should vote. Vote Conservative and be sure of an even better life. Macmillan was regarded as a great TV performer, but that film did not play to his strengths. The press was quite severe with the Tories about its stilted tone, and I don't think they were wrong. Some years later, Edward Heath, then Tory chief whip, described the broadcast as a disaster. For me, it remains a patronising example of just how not to do politics on television.